Welcome, all you beautiful thinking people, you, to Advocation X. Remember, folks, everything in these videos is opinion, an opinion that's based on facts. Now, we don't claim to be experts in any of these fields, but I can tell you all the research that we are gathering is to further your ability to accumulate knowledge and therefore your power. Hit that like button, subscribe, become a member, hit crush that bell, don't miss anything going forward. We have things in store for you. What I'd like to tackle today is the investment climate, our crazy markets. What's going on with the bond markets and inflation? And remember folks, this is for entertainment purposes only, not a financial advisor. But I can tell you this, after this, you will have a little more knowledge to add to your base in order to make informed decisions as we try to do here in Advocation X. So we'll call this an investment newsworthy broadcast. Let's dive right in right now. We are looking at the possibility of a massive adjustment in inflation. When inflation was sitting at 4%, everyone was afraid. People were rushing towards the bond markets. Why? Because the bond markets look like a more secure place to put your money when things are getting out of hand. Because we know that the Fed in the United States or the reserves in Canada are going to do their best to hedge inflation and bring us back to a spot of reality where we can continue to coast at a proper level of inflation and thereby get back to normal or business as normal. Why, when inflation was sitting at 4%, did the Fed not crash everything with a massive tax hike? Well, in my opinion, and again, it's my humble opinion, based on the facts of everybody I can gather it from, they were afraid to panic the entire market and throw everything into a tailspin. Nobody wants another 2008. Nobody wants another depression. However, they've already plunged us in there. How are we managing to coast and continue on in this climate, in this day and age, and this market climate? Well, let's look at some of the facts. The markets are only about 20% driven by retail investors. Most of it is driven by industrial in investments. Large hedge funds, uh, money market managing funds. There are all these people with billions and billions and billions of dollars that are fueling and moving the market. So when they blame retail investors for crashing stocks and doing all this stuff, don't believe the hype. Can retail investors influence a stock or two? Yes, they can. If you take a few million retail investors and you start putting your money securely into one ETF and standing by it, yes, you can alter that ETF. Can the big boys in the hedge funds crush you anyway? Yes, they can. If they got together and decided that they were going to target that stock, it's going down. Okay? Make no mistake about it. As a retail investor and a novice, like we all are, because if we weren't, then there wouldn't be 95% of people losing their money in the stock market. Does it take a genius to realize that there's only a small chance of really, really becoming rich on your own in the stock market? Okay, so what we have to rely on is the scraps that are thrown to us by the big hedge funds and those guys who wish to either liquidate their assets or gain some. Okay, I am a multi-billion dollar hedge fund manager and I made a mistake and I bought stock A. I mean, it was a small mistake. I mean, it didn't crash, it didn't lose a whole lot of money, but we're down 13, 14% in the shares. But I put billions there. So how hard is it for me to pay a few million dollars here and there and get all these people to start to hype up that stock? There's enough retail investors out there that if you all catch on and start buying that stock, you will be putting me in a position where I can sell my shares as it starts to rise in value. Now, as I sell my shares, which I'm not gonna dump them all at once because the stock will crash and I won't make my money. So I start slowly dumping my stocks in and trying to keep that market as steady as possible while getting my money out. Eventually, 
I'm going to recoup a lot of those losses. And instead of losing $800 million, maybe I only lose 500000 That is in the best interest of my clients. Remember that. Now, you as a retail investor, why did you buy that stock? Do you have any idea? Oh, right. You heard it was a great stock and that it was going places and that you were going to make millions of dollars on the stock, didn't you? And you put your money there and it went down. Shook your head and said, guys, that's not right. Okay, what should I do? I believe in this stock now. Somebody said to you, dollar cost average. Okay, while it's going down, let me put some more money in there. I'm going to put another 10% and bring it down a couple of pennies and it goes down 20 pennies and you go wait a second what is going on here okay well maybe this is a bargain I'm gonna buy a whole lot more at this bargain basement price so you double your shares hoping to cut your losses in half and that hoping that its shares go up again so you can sell and recoup your losses at a much faster rate Phew! wow you've brought your average cost into a specter where you believe looks good for me in the future and it goes down why is it going down because those big guys are getting rid of the rest of their shares they're not at the massive profit that they were looking at when they first hyped it but when they look at the average of what they've sold for they've gotten most of their money out of it minimal losses and they're putting that rest of that money into something else that's going to move. You're left holding the bag. Don't do it. These big boys right now in this present climate are trying to get rid of so much of their holdings. So much of their holdings. Any holdings that they feel are not going to be able to weather this storm coming up, they're getting rid of they're also taking some profits so they can continue to show their clients that there are some benefits to staying with them. Try to think logically like these guys would be thinking. They're not out to make you rich. You must understand that. Knowledge is your power. When I say we never give up and we never give in, that doesn't mean we remain a sucker. What that means is we're strong, we are a force to be reckoned with, and we will not knuckle under to foolishness and stupidity. So, let's be careful where we put our money. Do your research, and don't just run after the hype, because by the time you heard about the hype, it might have been close to its peak already. You're getting in at the top, you're going to be the loser. Let's just say the hype is real. And it's a really great stock and it will move, but it's mostly retail investors that are in it. The fundamentals look good. The business plan is great. The CEO is an honest individual and he's acquiring companies that are going to further the cause and make them successful so you can become rich. Well, think about this. The big guys, they can short that stock because that stock is going to struggle one way or the other. It has to get past a break point. If they can hold that stock down long enough, they're going to make huge money. When they borrow their, share, their shares, sell them at that high point, and they wait for the stock to come down so that they can repurchase those shares that they borrowed at a low point, and they make the margin in between. And then they give back those shares to the person who loaned them to them and go, okay, we're even. I made 30% on every one of them. Oh, those people at the top holding the bag? Ah, it's their problem. Because that's the way the stock market is. Now, can we do without shorting? Probably not, because the shorting seems to keep people kind of balanced. It seems to keep these um, different stocks and ETFs in a place where they are reasonably fluctuating. Because if it's a very strong company, Chances are it will weather the storm of shorting. The short sellers will end up having to pay a premium. It makes them a little more shy to go after the next one. And you become successful because you bet on a really decent company. Don't stop. But please be careful about how, where, where and how you place your bets. You must do your research. 
the climate we're in with the bond market, it looks like there's a possibility that bonds are going to start giving some good, decent yields again. And that will be in an effort to hedge this massive inflation that's going to come our way. Now, I know you say, Clyde, why are you saying massive inflation? Well, to me, it's massive inflation and it's inflated and it's not proper. Because if I have a whole hectare of lumber sitting there, just sitting there, and nobody wants it, well, it's going to warp, it's going to go, I'm going to have to lower my price, i got to get rid of it, right? That's normal economics, right? That's supply and demand. There's no, there's no two ways about it. So now, why then, if I have a lineup going around the country, all wanting to buy that stuff I have in that hectare of land, why is my price going up? Oh, that's right. When there's a big demand, you raise your prices, right? Because you have to be able to get all this. Oh no, wait, you already have all the wood. Why are you raising your prices? Did anybody ever think of that? Are you people even on the same page? I know my beautiful thinking people are, and that's why you'll share this video to those who are not on the same page, because they're not thinking straight. I have all that lumber sitting there. I have an overabundance of people wanting to buy it. I should be able to bring my price down so I can produce hectare after hectare after hectare of lumber and supply everybody's needs and keep it moving. No. There's one other reason you have to take into account. Greed. Absolute, unadulterated greed. And who are those greedy people? Just look at the ones that are gouging on prices when they don't have a shortage of supply. This is almost everybody out there right now, folks. Almost everybody out there right now has an overabundance of supplies because they've tried to keep their companies rolling in a, in a landscape where nobody was really buying. Okay, we're not referring to lumber specifically. However, lumber is a commodity that they have been gouging you on. But many other things that have been continually produced that have an overabundance, but yet they are selling it at a premium. They're gouging you guys. They're trying to make more money than they deserve. They already took government money and they want your money too. Well, here's my fix for these greedy people. Let's share this information with everybody and boycott anything that you feel is unfairly priced. Boycott it. Don't buy it. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to end up with an overabundance of products. They're going to end up with no turnover and they're going to say, whoa, we need to get rid of this stuff before we even bring out the next tier or the next model or the next year or next anything. And if we're going to get stuck with all this stuff, it's going to be a total waste. Reduce, 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 reduce. We will drive prices down if we stop buying the garbage. If we stop letting them manipulate us and raise prices on greed and greed alone. Yes, when something is scarce, it is difficult to keep the price down, okay? You have to slow the herds so that you can continue to sp supply on a steady pace. Understandable. Guys, let's stick together and make sure we're watching each other's back. Let's not allow greedy actors to take advantage of those who most can't afford to be taken advantage of. If you have any questions about this, please do put them in the comments. I'll do my best to dig up the answers for you. But remember, folks, we never give up and we never give in. But we'll always keep an open mind because knowledge is our power and we're not giving up our power. Do your research. And hit that like button, subscribe, become a member. Smash that bell. Don't miss any content coming forward. We need you for our future success. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you. So, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and above all else, stay
day as happy 